welcome back to my channel. It feels like it's been quite a few days now since I've uh, sat down in front of the camera and have a little bit of a chat with you. But do you know what? I think it's done me the world of good because I kind of did a few of the boring things that are not all that interesting, really. Uh, when I last spoke to you, it kind of got me thinking because I'd said that I'm a little bit guilty of uh, buying uh, PDF um, dressmaking patterns and then not always doing things with them. So I spent um, a whole afternoon uh, looking round on my phone. So what it is, some things I've bought via my Apple iPhone. So I've kind of got a login details and it's all the passwords are saved and things. So sometimes when I want to then go on my Microsoft laptop, I can't always get on things uh, because the passwords don't you know, crossover kind of thing, unless I know the password. So what I spent some time doing is um, lock, trying to log into things, places I've bought patterns from on my laptop. When I couldn't get in, I was having to reset passwords. Uh, then I'd go back to my Apple phone. I'd reset the password. I'd set it to something I could remember. Not that I'm going to remember for life, because I don't like to put the same password in everything. It was just so I could remember it long enough so I could remember when I go on the laptop. I'd set it to something that I could remember for a few minutes. Then I'd go on to the laptop, lo um, log in, use that and then save the password on there so then I can get onto these websites on my iPhone and on my, um, you know, my Microsoft laptop. And then what I ended up doing is, excuse me, I've got a hair on my face. I had a hair on my face a bit earlier. I was going, <laughs> right. So, um, Oh, actually, I'll mention what I'm wearing. I am wearing my Soho 7 toaster sweater version 1. And, I'm, um, and I made it in that fabric that I won from, uh, well, I've been calling it by, uh, by Graziella Fabric. Um, but I've seen, uh, I've, I have heard it pronounced by Graziella Fabrics, right? <laughs> so it might be by Graziella Fabrics, uh, not by Graziella Fabrics, but you know, I suppose we, it just depends how you want to say it, but it probably, I would go by more what I've heard other people saying, Graziella, more by what, how I'm pronouncing things. So, uh, and yeah, it was the uh, metre of fabric that I want, and it's ever so cosy, and it's lovely, and I've got this on because I'm going to be going um, out to the co-op, the coop, as I call it, in a bit, but um, I want to be back, I don't know what time it is, I haven't put my watch on, uh, there's a knitting book release on create and craft at quarter past 11 and it's a star wars one so ideally i want to do this get down to the co-op grab a few bits for lunch come back and be in time for that so we'll just see how things go so um yeah pdf patterns and things so basically i ended up um printing some of them out on the laptop because i prefer to print uh from the laptop because you can set it to 100 percent where when you do it on ios you never know and they're not always the right size when you measure the test squares so it's better to do it via the computer so um some of them are printed out some of them are just printed out the instructions and i've decided i'm going to send them off as a0 files to get professionally printed just because i think there's so many pieces and I did have a couple of patterns that I've had professionally printed A0 files, which I've never printed out the instructions for, and I've printed those out. So I did all that kind of boring stuff. I did a bit of tracing. Actually, I didn't get it here, did I? Um, I traced out. Do you remember I'd just received the uh, Jamie um, shorts by Tilly and the Buttons. I had ordered it from Minerva and it had arrived. Well, I've really been quite good and I've basically, I've got that done. You might have seen it already on Instagram. It was my most recent post and my posts do go over to my Periwinkle Cottage Crafts on Facebook. So, um, so yeah, but I'll talk about those in a minute. So I traced that, those out. Um, still haven't done the South Bank. Obviously, it's all, the fabric's pre-washed. Pattern to trace, pattern here, everything's ready to go, but I haven't done it yet. Um, uh, because I just, because do you know when you just get get caught in the moment? Because um, I'd done all this computer stuff and you know tracing and things, and I just wanted to have a bit of fun. And uh, then what else did I trace? And I traced out the bralette. 
so I've got a little bit more understanding of those pattern pieces now. Do you remember I was talking about the 25k bralette from Rad Patterns? And it's a free pattern if you join their Facebook group and you just get the code and then you put it in on their shop. So basically, I said to you there was four top pieces. There was an armband, an optional armband, and a and a waist. Well, you call it what would you call it? It's a waist piece because it's going to be up here, but the band basically. And the reason there was four tops, one was a back piece, which you use for ev whatever one you decide to do. And the three and the other three, they're for different fullness of bust. And you basically, you can work that out. I'm, I've looked at the chart. Um, the way it fell for me, I fell very small um, on, on the underbust measurement. So my cup size um, wasn't included in it. So I went one along and still my cup size wasn't included. The diff, I think it's the difference you work out. So... Um, but I've gone, I'm going for the second one along, but a full bust. But all I've done so far is trace out the pieces. It's so funny because you've got all these big pattern pieces. And then now I've traced it out, I've got these tiny, tiny little pieces. They do look minute, actually. But I suppose you're going to be really using like really stretchy fabrics. Maybe I'll, I'll get them. Bear with me. Right, I would have cut a little bit out there while I went and got this. So basically, here's all the pattern pieces. I've just basically put a hole in them um, that I, I've got like a cropper dial thing. I made a hole and I've just threaded a ribbon through and it's been hanging up on my door. So those are all the big massive pattern pieces that I've traced from. And these are just basically what I've got now. Um, that back piece. I can't see them all too well, can you? It's probably not a good way to show you. That's the front piece. See, the front piece looks quite full, that full busted one. And then I've got the optional armband. And what do they call this? No, they do call it the waistband. That's interesting, isn't it? So, shall I pop that? I'll hang that there for now. I do that quite a lot, actually. If I've traced a pattern out and I'm going to be using it shortly, I'd just rather hang it because if I leave it like I have left the Nina Lee South Bank lying on the floor here, but it's because I know I'm going to be using it so quickly, but I know I'm not going to be doing that just yet. So I've just left it out because I'd at least like to use it once before I fold it up and put it away. And I will admit, um, I've run out of these folders. I might have to cut a bit out here. See these folders? That's the undie sweater look. And I've put the stretch percentage on there and the seam allowance so um so yeah i like these and i haven't got any more of them and i get those from tesco so um i'll just pop this back right so uh until i've got more folders i don't really want to do much more with patterns because i just need somewhere to put them i've got a little bit of a pile going on on top of the printer um so i can sort through things and actually there was a there was a folder that i'd got that i'd labeled and i printed out a top it was a sew over it top and I printed out a couple of bus pieces and hadn't printed out the rest or the instructions so I've gone ahead and I've printed all the other pattern pieces out I haven't traced or anything and the instructions out and uh, and I've popped that in the folder and things so what happened is now every year um I don't know how many years this has gone on for I kind of think I want to make a boy version of um of my Luna rabbit because this is the book Lu Luna La Lapin. I think I was calling a lampin. I think that Luna Lapin, and um, this is where I got her from. And uh, and there's a little boy called Alfie. So I remember buying the felt suitable for Alfie. Um, I think I bought a bit of shirt fabric as well. I think, but um, but so yeah. So what happened was yesterday afternoon, uh, we just had lunch. My husband was just chilling out, sitting down, and I knew that he'd want me to go and sit with him. But I thought I just can't sit here 
all afternoon just sit there and then it'll go have dinner and then sit there right, I need to be doing something so I said to him look I'll be up in a minute I'm just going to try something now I'd already got all the pattern pieces cut out for this rabbit because obviously I've made it before and I've got them safe so I came down and I traced all the pieces I did do a little bit of sewing on the machine because you, it's a it's a very much a hand project the lunar is but you um but you don't you don't have some of the bits that you do you can do on the machine you don't have to but i prefer it because they're like inside seams that you're not going to see and it just speeds it up so uh, the ears you do on machine you've got the option of doing that i actually did do machine on the on the the base of the bunny rabbit as well which it didn't say do machine or hand tap i don't think but i did that on the machine and did i do anything else on the machine uh well, well actually i did one foot base by hand and uh the other one i did on the machine i thought oh sod this i'm gonna go down and just quickly whip this up on the machine but basically i spent all afternoon making this had dinner and then spent a good bit of the evening so it is a lengthy project but i have got it done all in one day well one afternoon one evening which is great isn't it uh, so so i'm going to show you luna again first that you met i think last time but i've gone on and i've used my clapper to press her coat look i don't know if you remember what it looked like last time but look how crisp that is because what i was saying last time is when i made luna i didn't own a clapper and this is a wool coat and look how crisp that um that pleat is down the back it's just beautiful isn't it i just absolutely love her and i keep her in my bedroom and she's just just lovely she's one of my favorite things she is and, and that's i suppose why i keep her in the bedroom but i always intended on making the boy so here he is but he's got no clothes so please excuse him this is alfie he's lovely isn't he and I've, i think the fabric i've used my, what it is that this is i think this is liberty in a lunar and on her feet matching on her feet i've given him matching feet they're different to lunas i think it's liberty or it's a, it's a liberty knockoff i don't know actually but the designer generally uses liberty uh in the ears and on the base of the feet and uh, he's got actually he's got i've given him darker eyes when i made luna i'd only got these wooden eyes and i was never quite sure about them and she's got a brown nose but i thought well, you know what? i want black eyes and i'd actually got black buttons and i've given him a little black nose so he does look a bit different so i don't i don't i did think oh shall i change luna's eyes eyes to black but now i might just leave her as she's but he's just lovely isn't he i just absolutely love him and i was reading up a little bit about it, uh, the rabbits last night now the, re the reason the name luna uh, it's to do with basically a hairs you know like um you know that a hair that's a bit like a rabbit but it's a hair um there's there's some connection with them with the moon that's where the luna came from and the lapin uh, is actually french for rabbit so that's where the name come from uh, i don't know where she got the name alfie from uh, the designer is sarah peel but um but they're just what i really like about uh, these i love the clothes um i do like making toys in general but i do find ones with clothes more appealing um you know and, and the clothes for these are just to die for they're like really high end they're like you know like human clothes they're just absolutely divine they are um they're really lovely like i've looked at i thought about making him a shirt and it's actually got the um the yoke pieces you know when you're with a shirt and you've got a yoke and you'll have the yoke on the inside and the outside it's got those it's just lovely isn't it but i'm not i'm not entirely sure what i'm gonna make for him yet 
right so what happened is and i'll just pop um luna aside because obviously we're talking about alfie now aren't we so we'll keep alfie so i had a look at the boys clothes and by the look of it i have already um pre um photocopied some patterns from before when i must have made luna for the boy things so it must have been a plan for ages but um but because obviously I'm a girl and I, am, and I buy girly fabrics, I don't know how suitable my fabrics are going to be to make his, his clothes. Now, I have made the Tilly and the Buttons um, Cleo dungaree dress twice. And the first one I made, I made in a uh, like a blue um, cord, a slight stretch cord uh, that I purchased from Amanda um from so social in tamworth and um so if i've got some of that knocking about i was thinking i could make him trousers but what it is the clothes in this book for alfie um i'll show you them actually i've had an idea uh, if you've been watching my channel a while, you'll know I've made myself a coat, uh, a lovely light tweed. Mine was an acrylic wool mix tweed, not 100% wool tweed because it was expensive. But uh, I was having a look through and then look, there's a little tweed um, over the shoulder bag for Luna. So I was thinking with some of the leftover fabric, I could make her a little satchel, couldn't I? Uh, it's called the tweed bag. So that, that, and actually she's got a matching skirt to go with that as well. Um, let's have a look. That's the Luna I made, look, the coat. The, the coat look was meant to have four buttons, but I ended up in the end, I've told you about this before, I only ended up doing one button and one button hole just to do up there because um, I was having trouble um, with my machine. Do you know I was saying to you that um, I wasn't a massive fan of a, 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 a one step buttonhole foot thing because, it, you know, I've had some issues with it sticking and things and I don't think my uh, four step buttonhole machine was liking the thickness of this at the time. But um, I've done I have done a bit of research now so i have gone on i have used my uh one step buttonhole recently um but i think i know the time and the place to use it a little bit more now and i understand a bit more i think what helps is actually i'll talk about that in a moment because i'm going to go on to that but um yeah i ended up um just cutting a little slit um for her and doing the button i i don't know um because it's been so long since I've bought her, I can't bought her, made her. I can't remember quite exactly what I went went on, but I remember machines not really liking all the bulk. I think if I hadn't have done such thick wool and hadn't done double layer, maybe it would have been, been a bit better. I don't know. Maybe I needed a new needle. Who knows? But I remember just at the time I didn't bother. Let's find it out. These clothes. I'm going off on one, aren't I? So that's Alfie's outfit there, look, waistcoat, shirt and jeans. Now, I really like, look, the waistcoat is lovely, isn't it, right? But I haven't, I can tell you now, I haven't got anything that would be suitable. I really don't think I've got anything that's going to look nice for that waistcoat in a boyish colour. Um, then... I'll turn the page. Then look at the jeans. I, I've probably got some denim. I've probably got some lightweight denim knocking about. I'm not overly keen on those jeans. I think they look a bit basic. I think if I was to make those jeans, I'd like, because it's a bit, I think you'd do the legs in a big piece so you don't have a side seam. But I think that's what I don't like about them because with jeans, one of the lovely features of jeans is the side seam, isn't it? With the top stitching, the two lines of st top stitching. So I personally think if I made these, I would probably think, I know it's a doll, isn't it? Well, a, you know, a bunny rabbit, a toy. So you think, oh, why bother? But I'm a bit particular about things. I would probably take this pattern piece, um, 
cut it in half and then add a seam and then join it and then have a liner top stitching down the side and maybe you'd even stitch a it's got pockets on the back but you don't really get to see them do you maybe i'd do a false pocket and a false fly stitching or something sorry i've got the hair on my face again i probably want to jazz them up if i did do those right uh then i looked along and then there's the shirt I probably could find something to make a shirt. So that's where I was with that. But then I remembered that there was another book. Um, and I thought, have I bought it? And I went and had a dig around. And I had, I'd got it, right? And it's called Sewing Luna Lappin's Friends, right? Now, when I looked through the book, it was very clear to me. I had never read this book. Now you think, why on earth would you buy it and not read it? And I remember now, because I am quite strict with myself. I know I, you know, I like a bit of fun, but I am very strict with myself. And I think I um, wouldn't allow myself to look in this book until I'd made the boy. Because I'd got the, the you know, the felt, wall felt ready to go and things. I think that that's what I decided so I had a lot of fun so after I'd finished him yesterday evening because I wasn't doing it right up until bedtime or anything um I just sat visiting my books reading all the little stories and things I don't think I've read every single story in it but I've read a good bit to learn a little bit about them and this is lovely this one and um and I thought I'll look for boys clothes and um and i found him here now the fox is wearing uh some cord cord shorts they're shorter than those jeans and i think they look a lot cuter i think i like them being a bit shorter than those jeans and i like the corduroy so i might have a dig around and see if i can find the corduroy bottoms but then I saw this other little coat and then it got me thinking and then I was thinking about my coat. I was thinking I've got enough pink, I could make a pink coat. So then I was thinking, is Alfie going to be a gender confused rabbit? He might be. <laughs> he might be. I might, I don't know whether to make some more clothes that are girls as well um but then do i want to keep redressing them or shall i keep making more animals so i don't know what, what i'm not i think it, i might do is when i make some dressmaking items um when it's things i always think well i can use this for the dog's clothes but i'm also going to see how much i've got left and just keep knocking up clothes i think for these stuffed animals maybe in time i'll make more animals but i think what i might do is with scraps i might make the clothes so i had a look through and uh and i was that's the outfit look it's really lovely it's got a little neckerchief but i know i, I don't think i've got anything suitable for a boy i've you know for to make the coat but then i was thinking oh i'd love to make that coat a version of my, in you know same as mine and then let's have a look my forward bits when i'm just looking through right there's a dungaree pattern with little boots but i don't think i really want to cover the base of his feet up because they're just the two adorable aren't they uh, oh and there's this shirt then i fell in love with this shirt and it's a, it's a granddad style shirt and it's got like a stand up collar. You can't really see it there. And it still works in the same way and you've got the yoke and things. So then I was more warm into the granddad shirt. I was thinking the neckerchief and then the, the, the blue cord kind of cropped trousers. That's what I was kind of setting my heart on. But then I don't know if I've got anything the right kind of colour or su suitable so i'm just so fussy so i don't know exactly what alf is going to be wearing there's another waistcoat here very boyish colours again so yeah i don't know what he's going to be wearing but i really like the look of um some of the boys stuff and some of the girls stuff so i'm going to be making both now the plan was um i was going to be making him really like more of like 
coming up to Easter time, you know, Easter bunnies and things. Uh, this could be an Easter mate, but do you know what? I just got in the mood. I think what it is, I'd mentioned it to you. It kind of made me do it, I think, actually, because I mentioned him to you. So thank you for that. Uh, you know, because I'm doing these videos, because I've, you feel like when you've mentioned it, you don't want to let people down, do you? So yes, yeah, so this is Alfie, and soon to have some clothes, and they've looked lovely. Actually, I'll insert a photo to what I've woken up to this morning on my uh, chair that I sit on to get ready, and there, I'll put, insert it on the screen, there's the three, the flamingo and the two rabbits sitting there together, and uh, it's just a delightful thing to wake up to this morning. So, uh, yeah, I've had so much fun after doing all that boring stuff. Um, you know, just tracing things, computer things, printing, sticking PDFs together and things. I've really enjoyed making something fun and sitting there just looking in my books, thinking, oh, what am I get? What clothes am I going to make them? And it's been absolutely delightful. Now I'm going to show you something dressmaking. Um, it's the shorts, the Jamie shorts. Uh, I did have, I did get a bit brave and posted these on Instagram. And actually, I t actually did the back. I don't always like you know do pictures of my bum but I felt like there was a need for it because of the fabric and I've ended up using the fat some fat quarters which I said I was going to do and because I've used different ones on the back these are buttons these are uh, yarn yarn balls with knitting needles these this isn't sewing or knitting themes it's just flowers but they're all coordinating and this is a, a sewing theme one here and um and actually this is sewing themed uh, it ha this has got elastic in it and it's got um, a waist tie now you have got a choice with this you can do long or short you can either just have elastic or just have the tie or you can have both and I decided to do both and what it is I really wanted uh, the fabric that I've used here I was actually planning on putting on the back so it would have just been sewing themed not knitting themed not that I don't I don't mind it being knitting themed because I am a knitter as well but I wanted to kind of keep it all one theme but what happened is um now I really I want to speak to you because you think before everybody gets really excited and goes out and thinks I can make some of these shorts out of fat quarters right um basically I took my fat quarters I ran the raw edges through my uh, overlocker. You could zigzag with a sewing machine. We did the same kind of thing. Um, and then I popped them in the washing machine. Um, I can't remember if I washed them at 30 or 40. I'm not quite sure now. I tumble dried them because I wanted them to shrink. Because I wanted to get any shrinking out of the way. So if I make some shorts, I can wash them and I can tumble dry them because I know um, that, you know, they're not going to shrink anymore are they and they're probably because of the kind of thing they are i can't imagine they're going to go bitty because some knits with lots of washing and tumble drying they get a bit old looking quick but i find that you know woven things are a bit more forgiving aren't they with the wash and things so what happened is when i lay my pattern pieces out the bum pieces are bigger then the bum piece wouldn't fit the um wouldn't fit then for that fabric this one oh, i've got a sample of it it's probably hard for you to see that that's the fabric it just wouldn't fit uh then which was a shame now it would the bum pieces would fit on the I, I cut the size two and the bum pieces would fit the fat quarters um if i turn them the other way which is not something you normally do you normally have your salvage here and here and that's the top of your pattern and that's the bottom. Uh, if you don't always put it that way because normally you've got a bit more give that way. But that's what I ended up doing. So the um, the front two pieces are the right way up. Um, they were. But the back pieces, I turned them that way. And that's why I use these because they were non-directional prints and it didn't matter. Another thing you have to bear in mind. Now, I didn't measure my fat quarter. Um now I've cut it, I'm not, actually, I could do the height of it. I can't remember what the standard size of a fat quarter is, right? The height of this one, 
is 17 and a half inches. Now, this is something you've got to be mindful of, right? A fat quarter in America uh, theoretically is smaller than a fat, fat quarter in the UK because a fat quarter, you take a metre of fabric off the bolt, you cut it in half that way and you cut it in half that way. So in England, that should be a quarter of a, of a metre of fabric and a metre is longer than a yard. But in America, you've got a yard of fabric that is cut into quarters. So their fat quarters are smaller. Now, my fat quarters are from the Craft Cotton Company. Now, I don't know what they do. I don't know if they've took a fat quarter of a metre or if they've took a fat quarter of a yard. I don't know. What I'm, what I'm going to do, actually, I'm going to go away and I'm going to work out the dimensions of what an American fat quarter should be and what a UK fat quarter should be. And I'm going to measure my fat quarters and I'm going to find out. So then we'll know then, won't we? And bear in mind, I did the size too. You could probably get a bigger size out of it, but you might have to turn them round maybe. I'm just thinking how much do I have left? So this is a bottom piece. I had got that much left so maybe you could have got a slightly bigger size out of it now when i've made the tilly and the buttons fifi uh shorts now um the this is meant to be a more improvers project and these ones are aimed at a beginner. Now, the reason for this is this is a lot more involved. You do French seams and you've got a top. Well, you don't do any French seams in this, right? But I did put French seams in mine. I'll just show you. Now, French seams are when you sew your fabric wrong sides together. Um, you trim it, then you uh, turn it the other way and sew right sides together so you end up with this enclosed edge inside you've got no raw edge and it's just a bit more forgiving in the wash it is so I did that and I've done it all along the crotch piece as well so it's basically there's no raw edges at all in this but if you made it as Tilly tells you to you would have them, you'd have to zigzag or overlock and things. So I thought that's worth mentioning. Um, something I learned actually from, oh, my husband's just texting me. He's telling me the Star Wars book is on the, is on now. Right, I'm gonna come back later. I'm gonna go and watch the Star Wars knitting and I'm gonna come back and hopefully I'll, I'll have to watch this back and remember what I've spoke to you about already. So I'll see you in a bit. <laughs> Right, I'm back. I've watched a little bit of that and I've hit record. Yeah, it looks really cute. It does. So uh, I'm not in any massive rush to buy it. But do you know if it's something that you can look at at a later date if you want to do it kind of thing? Yes, it's exciting, isn't it? So what did I want to say? So basically, yes. So what? why I'm telling you about the, the Fifi, even if, because it's not, it's more of an improvers project because of the French seams and because of the top because of all the bias binding and, and things, right? But those shorts are smaller, right? So if you did want to maybe cut bigger sizes out and get little pyjama shorts out, um, you could make those. And they're, I'd say they're at probably, if you didn't do, say if you didn't, haven't got, you're not ready for French seams, you wouldn't have to do those in French seams. You could basically um, sew them with a five eighths of an inch seam or 1.5 centimetre seam and then just zigzag the edge or overlock the edge if you've got an overlocker. So you could get, you know, quite a few shorts, um, you know, because these are smaller. I have made them myself and I could show you, but in all honesty, they do look quite a bit smaller because what it is, those, I cut those in a size one 
and I've cut these in a size too so there's the size difference because what it is with Tilly and the buttons um sometimes I'm cutting ones sometimes I'm cutting twos and obviously as a woman you know you do like fluctuate a little bit don't you but what I, I think the reason I would normally go for a two just two standard because it wouldn't matter if you went down and up a bit you've got the two but I made the uh, Tilly and the buttons Jessa shorts in a two and they absolutely swamped me at the time I haven't tried them on recently they swamped me this was last year so then I ended up making the size one and they fitted much better and then I was making these so that's why I ended up making the size one but when I measured up I was thinking more of a two so I, I've tried I have put these on actually and they do fit but do you know with like um with woven uh things um i i prefer a bit more give i think they feel a bit more restricted they're probably i think they're more restricted than they were than when i made them so obviously this lockdown hasn't done me much good has it but um yeah i, I prefer a bit more i think be generous when you're doing pajama bottoms um be you know be generous it sometimes with knit things i might go the other way be less generous with the sizing but i'd rather go more generous with sometimes the woven now obviously sizing is a massive deal isn't it in sewing and you know what i don't want to bombard you too much but there is so much that you have to learn uh, when it comes to dressmaking like another thing that um i often put on the front of them sewing patterns i spoke to you that i like to put what height they draft to um, I like to put the seam allowance, I like to put what stretch it needs. Uh, another thing is what um, cup size, most of the time, most places um, base their patterns on a B cup anyway. Now, I um, this used to throw me out, right, because I used to think, well, I'm not a B cup. So I used to do these massive full bust adjustments trying to think well I'm not a big I've got you know whatever but uh, some of the times I probably didn't really need to because um B cup if if you see a pattern this base um based on a B cup it, that means it's a two inch difference between the measurement which you know when you take a me you uh tape measure and you put it under your arms and you pull it up over your bust that measurement and then you take the measurement round your bust if there's a two inch difference, that means you're a, uh, a dressmaker's B cup, right? Um, so sometimes for me, sometimes, depending on what bra I've got on and things, sometimes it'll only be a one inch difference, which would make me an A cup, which make me have to do a, a small bust adjustment. Or um, say if it was, um, sometimes it could be a three inch difference depending on the bra or the time of the month and things, which then would make me a C, um, a, C a dressmaker C cup. So some patterns draft to a C cup. So if I was to uh, buy a pattern and I know they draft to a dressmaker C cup, I would probably just make uh, wear a padded bra when I made that pattern and then if it was a dressmaker's B cup um, I would just wear my regular kind of bras I kind of do it like that and um, and you can kind of work out um, if say if it says the bust measurement is say a 34 um, and you know that it's uh, they draft to a dressmaker's B cup then your under bust measurement would have to be a 32 um, you take you take two off. Do you know what I'm saying? So it's so much information, and I know that some of the people that watch my channel haven't actually delved into the world of dressmaking yet, and they're kind of warming up to it. So I don't really want to bombard you too much with that, really. Uh, but I think it's just things you learn. I, it's just been a learning curve, you know, for me. Um, you know, I, the first top I ever made, I did a full bust adjustment on it. I, I, I thought oh, I need a full bust adjustment. And do you know what? The top fits great. Um, but I probably, maybe did I need to do it? I don't know. But I was wearing at the time quite a padded bra when I sized myself for that maybe if I put that top on and I just wear my regular bra like this this is kind of like got 
let's have a look. Excuse me a minute. This has got this has got one of these in look. <laughs> look, it's got one of those. So it do, it doesn't make much difference, really, does it? And this brass kind of like it's like it would basically you're not going to see your nipple if you get cold you got a t-shirt and you're not going to see your nipple that's the kind of bra i like to wear this one just happens to have a bit of a pad in it maybe i won't get this back in on camera i'm the best i'll probably go to go to the co-op with odd boobs it doesn't really make much difference really i don't think that little bit of a oomph but obviously there's ways you can um you know make your boobs a bit smaller or if you need to give them a bit of oomph because that pattern's drafted to a bigger dressmaker's cup size than you just give them a bit of oomph can't you you know and f fill it out a bit kind of thing <laughs> so yeah so i think that's all i want to chat with you today about um i really hope you like seeing my shorts they're a bit crazy aren't they but uh the idea of doing this was to use up my fat quarters that i didn't think i was going to be using uh for quilting or anything and uh but i've ended up i don't didn't get these from so Haley jane these are ones i bought myself and i probably would have used them on something but when i saw them i just fell in love with them i just couldn't resist making them in sewing themes and i've got this little dream that i'm going to sit in my sewing room and it's a bit warmer uh in the summertime wearing my little shorts um at my sewing machine that would be nice wouldn't it or sitting on my bed um doing a bit of hand stitching it'd be nice wouldn't it so thank you so much for joining me today i think from the length of the video that i saw before i went off to watch a bit of knitting i think it's probably long enough to post it so hopefully next time um Oh, actually, is there anything I want? Do you know what? I had a little, I've got a tiny snippet I want to put in if I've got it. I'm sorry if this doesn't happen. But uh, there was a tiny little snippet I did of how I like to join fabric pieces. Because basically this is meant to be two pattern pieces joined. But because I was using fat quarters, I had to cut four pieces and join them together. And I didn't want lots of bulk. So I'll put in that video now if I haven't accidentally deleted it. I just want to show you how I join strips of fabric together. Basically, I have one right side up, the other one right side down, and I put them in a backwards L shape like this. Then I get a ruler. I can't do this now because I've, I'm holding the phone with my hand. Um, but I put basically it diagonal. So I'm going to be drawing a line from here to here or here to here, however you want to say it. And then I'm going to stitch over it. So I'm going to do that now. Uh, what I'll do is I'll draw the line and then I'll pin it and I'll sew it and I'll come back. Okay, I've drew my line and I've popped a couple of pins in. Now my machine, I can set the needle so it will sit right in the middle. So that's what I've done now and I'm going to stitch over it. I've stitched that in place and uh, I've done it in a contrasting thread so you can see it easy. I'm just going to take those pins out and just and then you watch the, uh, this is a friction pen look. It just disappears. I've done it, I've seen thread so you can see this easily. Now, normally what I would do is I would get a, uh, one of my quilting rulers and I'd use a rotary cutter and just uh, leave a quarter of an inch seam and chop that off. But because I'm set up with the camera here, I'm just going to cut it off with scissors so you can see where I'm doing it. I'm making the drawstring for the Jamie pyjamas. So you pull that out then and that fits like that look. So I'm gonna open this seam out. You can either, you can um, iron it one way or the other if you want to, or you can open the seam out like this. There's no, um, I've stopped putting water in this um, Oli so iron because it was leaking quite badly so if I want water now but I just use a spray bottle so I hope you like that demonstration I'm sorry for you know you know this already but you know some of my viewers might not know 
I just want to quickly talk to you about buttonholes. Now, if you've watched my videos before, you'll know that um, I'm more of a fan of using a four-step buttonhole on my old machine where I control it entirely on which direction that it goes. And then I have had some experience with my, my more modern machine that has got a one-step buttonhole where sometimes it's just stitching in one place and not moving. Well, um, I'm having a bit more success now because I've learned a bit more about it. Now, I have stitched these on my, uh, with the one-step buttonhole on a more modern machine. I just, at the time, I just thought, in all honesty, I couldn't really be bothered to be getting my old machine out. I just thought, I just wanted to get this done. I was very near the end of my project and uh, and I thought it's very thin. So basically I was only sewing through one layer of cotton with some interfacing on the back and it worked extremely well. I think one of the issues you have with the, uh, sorry about the wobble on the, uh, the camera, um, with the one step button hole is if the fabric is thick and there's like some bumpy layers, it needs to be able to move very freely for it to work correctly and to and it's worth understanding the pathway it's going to take so you can encourage it so actually when I was sewing this it did look like it was going to get stuck a couple of times and I actually just encouraged it in the direction I'm just going to show you my manual now it shows you here how it's going to stitch the buttonhole so it's going to go up and then it go it does and then it goes back down on itself in the same area. Uh, then it um, does a zigzag going all the way up. This is all on the left hand side. So I found it went up, down. It did a zigzag on the left. Then it did some side stitches at the top. Uh, then it stitched down, and it did um, some stitches here. And then it zigzagged up and then end and then did that kind of thing. So it does show you the route that it takes. And I think understanding that route is really helpful because if you can learn the route it's going to take, when it you, I find that when it get when it decides to get stuck, it's when it's doing zigzags going up or down. And I think if you can understand where the route uh, where it should be going you can encourage the fabric and that's what I did and I felt a couple of times if I hadn't have encouraged it in the direction it was supposed to be going I think it might have got stuck so these are things that's definitely worth thinking about when uh, I think you might need to make sure you've got a good a good strong new needle uh, interfacing helps um, you know, just it's trial and error, really. So, uh, like, you know, it did go well this time. I'm going to try and use it a bit more on projects and, um, but you know, do some test pieces and things. But I've got a little bit more confidence now. Now I understand which direction it goes um, because it works a little bit different to my one step buttonhole. Um, they, um, it, it does the zigzag basically straight away. Um, you zigzag up, you go side to side, zigzag down and go side to side. This works a little bit differently, this one step buttonhole. But it's definitely worth looking in your manual and learning which way it's going to go. Oh, and what I did learn, um, I was going to tell you this earlier before I ran off to watch the knitting, is that I thought with the one step buttonhole that you always need to have the button that you're using in the holder Um and then I thought, well, what do you do? Because I didn't need a button for these. Um, do I? I didn't need one. So I didn't have a button to put into the thing. So what I had to do is measure how big this was going to be. And there's an actual little guide um, on the buttonhole foot that you can set it to. And then that was going to be the size of the hole. And that worked absolutely perfectly. So I hope you took a bit of good information from that. And I'll send you back to me. So I hope you saw that, um, you know, I hope it, I haven't deleted it and you can see a little bit of snippet of how I did that. And uh, yeah, so I think, oh yeah, so that's what I was saying to you. The idea was to use up these fat quarters, but bear this in mind, look how much I've got left. So now instead of having these pretty fat quarters that will sit beautifully on the shelf, 
I've got these scrappy bits now. So, and, oh, those are quite substantial, those bits, aren't they? From the, when I've cut the front pieces out, look, that's how much I had left. So, um, maybe scrunchies. What do you think? Hair scrunchies? So I can sit at my sewing machine in my sewing theme shorts and tie my hair back in a sewing theme scrunchie. Yeah, I think that's what I might be doing. I, I, actually, I loved it. That's why I love seeing these, doing these videos for you. Because you kind of can see how my brain works. Um, I'm kind of like, I kind of know the kind of things I want to make. But then sometimes things happen. And then all of a sudden this other mate comes along because of something you're doing. So it's just the way it goes, doesn't it? It's like spontaneous in the moment. I think you can do a certain amount of planning. But don't be worried about going off on a tangent and just doing whatever feels right because you're not going to lose your mojo then, are you really? That That's what works for me anyway. So thank you so much for watching me today. Hopefully I'll have a South Bank sweater dress soon and maybe some clothes for Alfie. He might be gender confused, but hopefully he'll have some clothes on him. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you soon. Bye.